Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today uh, is going to be a little bit of a ranty, rambly, nonsense type video. Uh, one of the things that every Linux fanatic, enthusiast, evangelist, whatever, you know, asks themselves or gets asked a lot is, why isn't Linux more popular? And the, there are so many answers. There's the answer of uh, you, not enough marketing. You know, there's not, you know, Canonical's not out there doing ads on the TV about Linux or whatever. There's the whole momentum of Windows argument where you know, Windows is just so big it'd be hard to break through unless something terrible happened to Windows argument. There's the, uh, it's just too hard to install argument. Uh, there's the, um, there's the idea that Linux is, I don't know, more attuned to servers or whatever, which I suppose is like a good argument or could be a good argument. Uh, the argument that is probably the most popular or the most agreed with is that the software on Linux is just not as good um, or is just not available as much as it is on Windows and Mac OS. And that's a good argument. It, it, for years and years, the argument really, really, truly focused on games. Uh, and that was a big downside of Linux because if you wanted a game, you had to dual boot. You had to have could keep a Linux computer around so you could play your AAA video games. And that's not so much the case anymore. With Proton and Vulkan and everything that Steam has done for video games uh, and the introduction of Stadia and GeForce Now or whatever it's called, it also, you know, allows Linux users to pretty much do play any game they want on Linux. And it's fantastic. There's, you know, there's a few exceptions and there's a few things that you have to, a few hoops you have to jump through if you want to have a true... Uh, well, uh, a true, uh, a very good experience on on Linux when it comes to games, uh, and even micro, uh, you know, so that takes care of the gaming thing. And then the the other area of software that was always you know um, missing or whatever on Linux was the word you know Microsoft Office and a lot of the Microsoft pr pr programs. That's not as big of a deal anymore because there are really good open source alternatives. And also, Microsoft has started to bring some of their uh, applications like Teams and Skype and stuff to Linux natively. And I wouldn't be surprised if we see Microsoft Word and off, you know the rest of the Office suite on Linux eventually as well. Because Microsoft seems to have kind of warmed up to Linux in the last few years. So that leaves kind of one big category that is still un, uh, unrepresented, I guess, in in Linux, and that's the graphical and media editing suite that is predominantly ruled by Adobe. Now, uh, I'm not a big Adobe fan. I don't know anybody who uses Linux who is, uh, but you can't deny that a lot of their stuff is pretty good photoshop is good uh when i first started making podcasts i uh, edited all of my stuff in audition and then when i went to switch to linux i had to start using audacity and man did i miss audition there's just so much more you can do in audition than you can do in audacity and it's just you know i mean look you can we can switch over to uh the my main screen here this is this is a audition, or no, this is audacity, excuse me. <laughs> and it's just, it's, you know, I, I've come to like it. I've come to, you know, you know, even enjoy using it, but it's not as intuitive. It's not as full featured as audition was. And the same thing for, you know, Photoshop. GIMP is not a true Photoshop replacement. It's just not, you have to use Photoshop in conjunction with other things like, you know, Inkscape or whatever. Um, for example, in GIMP, there's not even a shape maker tool. I mean, even Microsoft Word has a shape maker tool, but GIMP does not. You have to do things with, you know, selections and stuff. It's it's just not the same. Uh, so the the point of today's video is 
you know, what um, Adobe Creative Cloud is missing from Linux. It's not on Linux at all. There's no, uh, if you want to get it running, you could try to do it in Wine. Uh, usually when you try to do that in Wine, you have to use a really old version before the Creative Cloud stuff came out, when they were still releasing just standalone software. And, you know, that means you're not getting all the true features. You're, you know, probably are using something that's kind of insecure. Uh, and, you know, that's, you know, not not a great experience. And it's not definitely not something that somebody who's just, you know, wants to edit a photo is going to actually jump through those hoops to do. Um, so they're either left with staying on Windows, where they can use the software that they're familiar with, or they can switch to Linux and use something like GIMP or Photoshop or Ink, you know, Inkscape, not Photoshop, but Inkscape or um, Shotwell, I think, is, a, is another one that's uh, around. Um, same thing with, with video idioms. So you, with video editing suites, there's, there's Premiere on, for Adobe. You have to use Kden Live on on Linux. And I've come to like Kden Live, but it's still not as full featured as Premiere is. Now, granted, it's free and open source, so it's what it is is very impressive considering that, you know, not only do you not have to pay for it, but it's, you know, something that you could fork and create, you know, an offshoot of if you wanted to. It's really cool, right? Uh, so the question at the beginning is why isn't Linux more popular? I feel that all the other arguments that I went through there at the beginning can be overlooked. The, the hardship of installing isn't, it's not as hard as it used to be, uh, you know, Gaming has has taken care of itself. Even a lot of the Microsoft, you know, Office arguments have taken care of itself. Uh, the marketing even has kind of increased because now you have first party uh, hardware vendors like Dell and Lenovo and HP actually making Linux laptops and putting them on their stores. Uh, you know, so while those problems are no longer, you know, an, an issue really. Adobe continues to be the the stumbling block for Linux popularity. And the, there's two ways we can look at this. We can either sit here and say, well, we're just going to wait until Adobe eventually brings it to Linux, which I don't think is ever going to happen. Uh, I, could, I would love to be proven wrong, um, but uh, I just don't think it ever is ever going to happen. Or we could say we need true alternatives to, uh, you know, Photoshop and Premiere and Audition and stuff. And, and we have those things kind of. So like if we, if we, uh, let's just close this and open up GIMP. This is GIMP. And I love that that opened up so fast because it's not always that fast. Uh, yeah, this is fine. There's, things you can do here that you could do in in Photoshop. Um, and I think I have, yeah, I have Inkscape as well. Oops. This is Inkscape. Um, I'm not sure why GIMP does not play well with the tiling uh, layout in DWM. That's really weird. I have a feeling it's ha something has to do with the default rule for it. Anyways. Um, and there goes Eatscape. Apparently, I there was a delayed quit. Anyways, um, you know, so there are alternatives on Linux, but they're not as good as what Adobe offers. So, in order to get past the stumbling block of Adobe software, we have to either wait for them to bring it to Linux, or we have to have true alternatives. And right now, we don't have true alternatives. So, uh, the Stumbling block is going to remain as long as those two things continue to be true. Um, the question is, does it matter enough to the Linux community to actually, you know, change, to make the change necessary in order to, you know, overcome the lack of Adobe software? And so far, the answer to that has been no. I mean, yes, GIMP exists, um, and yes, GIMP is still, you know, being developed, but it's not... It's not moving in in a sufficient pace to make you know a sense to, you know or not sense but um it's not moving at a sufficient pace to actually be in, 
useful enough, I guess. I don't, I don't know. Um, same thing with Inkscape. Inkscape is, is, is well maintained, uh, but it doesn't have that m momentum that it would need in order to successfully see the, the development to actually be on par with something like Illustrator. Um, and Caden Live is probably the closest thing because it is, it does have a lot of really good momentum and uh, there's, it does a lot of good things. And every year you see it get new features and new, new uh, bug, bug fixes and uh, stability patches and all that stuff. So Caden Live is probably on the tra tra trajectory, hard word, uh, um, where it could possibly, you know, go through and, you know, someday be, uh, you know, kind of on the same level as Premiere. Um, and, you know, there are, uh, like, the only thing we have on Linux in free and open source land that can be con paired really well to what you know Adobe can do is Blender and um, I think I do actually have Blender installed I don't know why I have Blender installed um, but I do have Blender <laughs> uh, I, the reason why I don't know why I have Blender installed is because I have no clue how to use Blender <laughs> I would love to learn how to use Blender but it's so complicated and there are not very many good noob level tutorials out there on blender and that's okay because it, it this is a piece of software that shows what is possible on linux when they try to when developers try to to push past the well you know we need a, a, a photo editing tool so let's just put together a photo editing tool and <laughs> Once we have it, that's the lowest common denominator meant. We don't have to push past that and make it excellent. You know, um, same thing with, uh, you know, auto editing software. Audacity has existed for, you know, de uh, two decades, maybe more. Uh, it's it's the lower co lowest common denominator. They, they've reached it. It's been created. And while it's still maintained, you know, it, it, for bug fixes and stuff, there's no mo motivation or momentum to push it to the next level to make it, you know, excellent, to make it good enough to compete with something like, uh, you know, uh, Audition for Adobe or any of the other closed sourced uh, auto audio editing stuff. Uh, but Blender, Blender has a lot of support as it's used not just on Linux, but also on Windows and Mac. And, you know, it, it compares favorably to everything else that it competes against. And the Blender people, the, the developers behind Blender, continue to push Blender to higher and higher levels. And that's something that you just don't see with, um, you know, Aud Audacity or Caden Live even really, or, you know, um, GIMP, especially, I mean, GIMP really is the, the, I mean, I don't want to, I'm not disparaging the, the developers behind GIMP because they've done a good job. They've done a service for the, the Linux community because we have GIMP. Having it is better than not having it, but it just, it just feels like they're, they've, you know, they've created it and there's no, there's no there's a motivation or incentive really for them to say, Hey, you want to want, let's go through and build something that is just as good at Photoshop. That's open source that, you know, works well on Linux and other platforms, you know, and that doesn't cost 60 or $70 a month. Now I understand when I, when I make these criticisms, 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 I understand that uh, that kind of motivation takes money, right? It takes uh, resources that the developers behind GIMP don't probably have. And, you know, that's probably the biggest stumbling block towards my dream of, you know, a, a, a true Photoshop alternative on Linux from happening. Because, you know, it takes money. 
and Adobe has money, but people behind GIMP probably don't have money, you know? So, I, I understand when I make the criticisms of not having the motivation or whatever for them to take GIMP or whatever, and Audacity and uh, Caden Live to the next level, that truly it's the resources that are holding them back. And the thing is, this is where I'm going to kind of... Um, Linux users have a, a, a very, I'm going to say, uh, dumb <laughs> uh, attachment to the word free. And this is free as in beer. Uh, if your program on Linux isn't free as in beer, it's not going to get used. And that's, <laughs> that is really the bottom line of where Linux is going to stumble. It's going to remain behind the wall of Adobe software because... Everyone who, who if, if you're willing to pay for something, chances are you're just going to use Adobe. If, but if you're not willing to pay, you're going to be stuck with these mostly mediocre tools, and Linux users don't want to pay. And, you know, that's, and Linux developers know this, right? They know that the, their audience isn't going to shell out 10 20 30 40 50 dollars a month for a software tool it's just for the most part that's not going to happen if gimp started charging or introduced a paid tier tomorrow nobody would buy, i mean very very few people would go through and spend that money same thing with audacity same thing with uh kid in live you know those organizations get their money through donations from uh, large groups like the you know the, the Linux Foundation or the EFF or whatever, um, that's where they get their money from. Uh, grants usually they don't get their money from the users, and I, I think the bottom line is that until it, it, until some kind of cultural revolution happens where Linux users might be more a little bit more willing to you know I would I would, I'd be the first in line to pay some money to GIMP to Kaden Live to Audacity. If I had the, uh, you know, the promises, I guess that that software was going to reach the level of something that uh, Adobe offers. But uh, I'm very much in the um, minority, I think there. So, just 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 kind of sum up. Audacity is never going to come to Linux, and we can't as Linux enthusiasts and evangelists or whatever, we can't sit around waiting for that. We need to take the software that we do have and push it to the next level, but I think part of that is going to be coming overcoming the whole free as in beer problem where we we just don't want to pay for stuff. And that's a... It's... It, I don't want to say it's an insurmountable problem, uh, but I think for the most part, Linux is kind of a lot like Android, so... When you look at the the revenues for the Android App Store versus the Apple App Store, you see that Apple makes a whole bunch more money. Their developers make a whole bunch more money because people on iOS are much more willing to pay for their apps than you know people on Android. And Linux suffers for the same thing. They're much less likely to pay for apps than somebody who play, who uses Windows or Mac. So it's just a like I said, it was a, it was a rambly type video. Uh, you know. It, 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 you know, I love Linux. I want to see Linux succeed. I want to see succeed. I want to see more and more people to meet people using Linux. And it, it bothers me a little bit that, you know, the, one of the things that people argue that, you know, the reason why I don't use Linux is because Adobe's not there. Well, you know, we do have these tools and they, they try these tools out and say, eh, but it's not just, it's not as good. Uh, and that's, you know, I want Linux to be as good, and same thing with all the software on Linux. I want to be, I want I want somebody to come from Windows and use open source tools and say, you want to run it? That's just as good an experience as you know Photoshop. Different, yeah, but just as good. And until that happens, you know Linux is not going to be you know um, anywhere where it's not already right now. So, anyways, that is uh, it for uh, this little 
you know, I managed to somehow get 20 minutes out of that that rant. <laughs> uh, if you wanna, uh, if you like this, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. You can support the channel in any number of ways. You can like us on Facebook. You can follow us on Twitter. Uh, you can also hit the subscribe button, which is, you know, the least effort you could do if you've made it this far. Uh, we really do appreciate everybody who subscribes. Um, you can also support us monetarily if you're interested. You can do go to patreon.com/slash/thelinuxcast. And um, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.